Iron Lung is a fantastic short horror game that came out of nowhere and blew everyone's mind. Made by the talented David C. Z Z David. I found the game very inspiring and decided to do something similar. Now, I have both thalassophobia. Thalassophobia? Man, I, I really can't read anything, can I? And megalophobia. So I thought I would bundle those two together and put them in a phobia-filled game. The goal was simple. You're trapped inside a rusty old submarine while a monster is trying to break in. And you have to keep fixing it in order to survive for a limited amount of time. It felt similar to Iron Lung without it being a complete copy of it. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen a game where you're trapped inside a place and you have to make sure the monster doesn't come- Oh my god, I made a FNAF game. <laughs> Now, before we begin, I would like to address the pink mustached elephant in the room. Yes, I am aware that Mark is making a movie based on Iron Lung the game. No, I am not copying him or his ideas. And yes, this is all just a huge coincidence. Me and Fisher started working on this game while I was still making the video for Late Night Mop. And Mark didn't tell me about the movie until way after. So yes, it's all a huge and very weird coincidence. You know what they say, great minds. Still the same ideas. <coughs> Anyways, like I mentioned previously, while I was working on the late night mob video, Fisher started working on some of the 3D models. Meaning that when I started working on this new game, I already had the base of the sub and the tools modeled, plus the hands, so I could start prototyping right away. The first thing I did was the main mechanics of the game. The walls, which is what I call the parts of the sub that get damaged, and the tools. The walls have three states. Fixed, dented, and leaking. And to help you fix the walls, you have two tools. The hammer and the welding gun. If a wall is dented, you just hit it with your hammer. However, if it's leaking, you need to weld it with your welding gun first. And once it's welded, use the hammer until it becomes a fully functioning wall again. Perfectly logic, but more importantly, realistic. This is pretty much the bulk of the game and what you, the player, will be doing almost the entire time just trying to keep the sub from flooding within a time limit. Now I know what you're thinking, fixing walls and welding leaks, what a thrilling game! Listen, I made a game about cleaning a house, so I'd like to think that this is a step up from that. Then again, maybe it's not. So while programming the walls, I did not have any visual component to work with. Fisher was still taking care of that. So I just stretched a cube that represented the wall. And then I had three copies of that cube in the exact same spot on the prefab, just with different colors to represent each state. And what I do in game is I switch the game object depending on the state of the wall. Obviously, later I would change this to Fisher's proper modeled walls. You know, Fisher is the real MVP of this game. Without him, this game would just be a collection of stretched cubes and error messages. I of course also made the animations for the tools. I used the hand Fisher modeled and for the hammer I made three different hit animations that play randomly when you click. And for the welding gun it's just the same pose but it shakes violently. <laughs> Once the walls and the tools were done it was time to add the monster. Well the first part of the monster. I won't spoil everything. There's no actual AI here. The way the monster works is actually just through a timer. Once that timer runs out, the monster will pick a random wall, and if that wall is either fixed or dented, it will attack it. However, if it's leaking, it will just pick another wall, preferably one that is not leaking. It will attack it and then restart the timer. Who said you need fancy AI to make a monster when all you need is an egg timer? At this point, Fisher was done modeling and texturing the sub, and I just replaced everything, and it looked so much better. I added some particle effects like water running down the broken wall, so now it actually looks like it's leaking. I added some sparks to the welding gun and to the hammer when it hits a wall. And I of course added the water. The walls will be leaking, meaning there will be water inside of the sub. I wanted some realistic, interactable water. I wanted you to feel like you're actually drowning. And I found the perfect one. I use this asset called KWS Water System. And yes, it's very expensive, but God, does it look good! It can work as an infinite ocean, which I would end up using later, or as a finite box, which was perfect to fit inside of the sub, and the simulation looks just magnificent. I don't know what kind of wizardry they used to make this, but I'm pretty sure someone sold their soul to make this a reality. Now, with the water in place, all I need to do is make it rise when a wall is leaking. To do that, I use something called 
action events. So on my water game object, I have a script that listens to when a wall starts and when a wall stops leaking. Meaning that if a wall starts leaking, it will listen to it, add one to a counter, and that counter is used as a multiplier for the water going up speed. And if a wall stops leaking, it will remove that from the multiplier. Meaning the more walls you have leaking, the faster the water will rise. And if the water rises too much... <laughs> To start testing this, I just needed to make the monster attack the sub, and the way I did this is either very smart or incredibly dumb. You tell me. The game has this gauge that represents the depth you are currently in. To win this part of the game, the red thingy inside of the gauge needs to go all the way down. And the way I did that was not through programming, but through an animation. And to change the difficulty, I call a specific function using the animation's event markers. This way, I have full control of when the monster's behavior will change. I really like this method, and it ended up working really well. Now, is it the best method? Probably not. Does it work? Yes, yes it does. And what do we say? As long as, as it works, that's what matters. 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 Very good. I should put that on a shirt or something. Link in the description. Now it was time to make this properly scary. Mostly with lighting and post-processing effects. And it went from this to this. Not too bad, I was quite happy with how this turned out. Now it was time to leave the sub, because the story of this game actually starts on a boat. And yes, this game has a story behind it. Not a very good story, but a story nonetheless. The boat was of course modeled by Fisher, and for this part I wanted to make it calm and relaxing. After all, this is the first tutorial to teach you how to move and how to interact with the world. This is also where I used the infinite ocean, and it just looked incredible. Now the mood was set visually, but something was missing. Music was something that I really wanted to do for this game. I made no music for Late Night Mop and no lo-fi album yet, clearly. So I really wanted to make music for this game. Now, the music is nothing special, but I do like the musical bits I was able to come up with. It goes from unholy soundscapes... ...to soothing ambient music. to intense orchestral music. It's on Spotify and everywhere else, if for some reason you wanna hear it. My favorite one is the boat ambient music. Speaking of audio, this game was missing some good old dialogue, and one thing I'm actually quite proud of making is the dialogue system. The dialogue was performed by yours truly. Oh, but what's that behind you? Yeah, I didn't know I could do that with my voice, but my vocal cords are still recovering from that recording session. Vocal cords aside, two things I wanted to add to my game were subtitles, and localization. For those unaware, localization is basically translating the game. In this case, I wanted to have the dialogue in English, but have the option for both English and Portuguese subtitles. I could add more, but those are literally the only two languages I know. Now, I like to save time, so if there's an asset on the asset store that does something I need, and it's not crazy expensive, I'll just get it. Whatever it takes to speed up the process. But finding a simple dialogue and localization system was a real issue. Now don't get me wrong, they exist, but most of these assets have to be built to fit most, if not every project. So they end up being way too complex, with tons of menus and options, and with a steep learning curve. And my ADHD would go crazy just thinking about learning what is basically a new software, and I had no patience for it. So instead, I decided to build my own dialogue system. There was still the issue with the localization, but that's when I found out that Unity actually has a localization tool built in. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Why have I never heard of this? Why doesn't anyone talk about this? Now, I know localization doesn't sound as sexy as cool new graphics features, but it's such an important part of a game. It allows your game to be played by more people who otherwise would not understand anything. And this tool is fully featured as well. You can build multiple databases for your translations. So I had one just for the dialogues, one for text and menus, and you can even export it into a CSV format, which allows you to open it on a spreadsheet. Meaning you could send this to a translator and then just import the new CSV with all the translated text. It's so useful. But anyways, back to my incredible dialogue system. I could go on for hours about the features I incorporated into it, but in short, it's a linear dialogue system, so no choices or brand 
branching paths. It works directly with Unity's localization tool, so all the subtitles show the translated text. It has support for characters. You can toggle audio and its source. It can wait for the audio to end to play the next one, or you can set a timer, or just go to the next one after an input. And it was also made with Odin Inspector, which was something I also wanted to learn for this project. So it looks very fancy, and some features even only appear in certain conditions. I think this turned out really cool, and I'm definitely grabbing this and slapping it into my next project. I must say though, this dialogue system and understanding the localization tool did take some time to build, but not even close to what I'm about to talk next. I made so many cutscenes for this game. Why? I mean, sure, the dialogue system took a while, but at least I can use it in my next game. Cutscenes are a one-time investment. Most of them were just the camera moving around, but others had a lot of moving pieces. Sometimes I would animate the arms, which was a mistake by the way. I had to time the dialogue parts to sync correctly with the video and add all the audio effects and music. Some of these cutscenes had like five or six audio layers. It was nuts. In the end, I do think they turned out quite decent and it does give the game a more professional vibe, in my opinion. At this point, the game was almost done, but it's also when I realized that there are a bunch of tiny little things that I still need to do. Like the main menu, the options, the credits. Thanks members, I appreciate your support. And if you want to become a member yourself and get access to very sporadic game dev streams, your name on my games and access to an exclusive Discord server, it's the blue button below you should click. For some reason I wanted to make extra skins for the tools, so now I have to make an extras menu with a skin selector for each individual tool. There's also an extra hard mode that gets unlocked once you beat the game once and while you're playing it, I need you to know that you unlocked it, so I made an unlockable screen as well. I'm also quite proud of this one, not gonna lie, if my next game has unlockables, I'm also bringing this one alongside the dialogue system. One little polish thing I wanted to add was some sway to the tools. Most first-person shooters have this thing where when you rotate your character, the weapon lags a bit behind the player's movement, and I wanted that. I wanted to add some bounce to my tools, you know what I'm saying? Put some jiggle on that! I know you can do that using rotations and whatnot, but that's boring. So instead I used a tool called Bone Stimulator. It's a pretty interesting tool and it works quite well. Simply add the jiggle component to it and... Okay, for this particular example, the jiggle had to be toned down quite significantly, but it does give it a more polished look. I also added a cat. I, I was forced to add a cat. You see, I do game development streams for my members sometimes, very rarely, and for Late Night Mob, my members wanted a cat in the game, and I promised that I would add a cat, and I didn't, and when I made a game development stream of this game, they were like, if you don't add a cat, we will riot! So I added a cat. And after all of that, the game was done. All I needed to do was get some people to playtest the game, so I grabbed a few friends and family to play it and... Turns out, game is hard! The main issue is that the game has something that I am going to call compounding difficulty. The harder the game gets, the more impossible it becomes to beat it. This is mostly because since the sub gets filled with water and there's no way to remove the water, every second with a leaking wall brings you closer to death. The monster also has something that I like to call rage moments, where it would go wild and started attacking non stop but not simply attacking, doing double attacks, and it becomes really hard to fix the sub if there's a bunch of those in a row. Because by the time you fix a leak, there's two more to fix. To fix this problem, I had to make a lot of small tweaks to the monster attack. Now I'm not gonna call it adaptive AI, because again, it's an egg timer, but it does somewhat adapt to what is happening. For instance, if you have a certain number of leaking walls, the monster will not do any double attacks. And that is one of the many little tweaks that I had to make to still give a tense feeling throughout the game, but without it feeling impossible to beat. The last thing I wanted was to make Iron Lung, but it's actually Dark Souls. So after a lot of tweaking the difficulty, this time the game was finally done. It's called Sinking Iron and it's available on Itch and Game Jolt. It's pay what you want, so if you just want to download the game, remember, click the no thanks, take me to downloads button. But if you do donate, I really appreciate your support. I purposefully omitted some things about the game throughout this video, so there are still a few surprises for you to find. I really do hope you like the game, it's different and a bit weird. You know, you inside the submarine, a monster making dents on the sub, and you having to hammer them, and if it keeps attacking, it can start licking into- Oh my god, I mean, we need to go deeper. A huge super mega thanks to all the members of the channel for your incredible support. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And that is one game out of two. And an album, in a way. So this is going good this year. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
Take care.